everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Buffer Designs. This week I am playing with a Simply Xenia bundle. This is an online exclusive. You won't find it in any of our catalogs. It's online only. Um, it's a great bundle. You can stamp your Xenias or you can die cut and paper piece them. For today's card, we're gonna stamp them and I'm gonna show you how to do emboss resist. Um, these flowers may seem a little intimidating if you're thinking about coloring them. I'm going to show you a really easy way to color them um, and it doesn't take much skill at all. Um, there are some other components to this suite including the designer series paper. We're going to use a little bit of it here. Um, so make sure you check it out online. There's a link here on YouTube that will take you back to my blog. It has two other Simply Xenia projects and a supply list and measurements for this card as well. Okay, so we're gonna do emboss resist. That means we're gonna emboss this image, we're gonna heat emboss it, we're gonna stamp it Versamark, heat emboss it, and then use watercolor to make that uh, stamped image rise up, okay? So we're gonna use watercolor paper. We're also gonna emboss this uh, sentiment as well, so I've got a piece of garden green. Um, I'm gonna use my let's bring it all over here i'm going to use my embossing buddy this is going to remove any static that may be sticking to my um, watercolor paper so that none of my um, embossing powder granules stick where i don't want them to stick all right so here's our image and we're going to use woo almost spilt that all over the place we're going to use versamark ink and versamark ink is a clear ink so when i stamp it you're not going to necessarily see it um, the other thing is we're gonna use white embossing powder. So white embossing powder on white paper, you're really not gonna see much at all. Um, but as soon as we start to add our ink, then you'll see it rise to the surface. All right, so I'm gonna put my white embossing powder. This is our embossing additions kit. It has the tool, or has the tray, the paintbrush, which helps you get off any of those granules that might have stuck where you don't want them and it also has that embossing buddy okay so now well you know what while we're here let's go ahead and do our sentiment as well nope we don't need that we need we're going to do um versa mark as well stamp you know i didn't do the embossing buddy and i can already see some granules sticking to it versa mark and white embossing powder. All right, now we're gonna bring over our heat tool. Let's get all of that out of the way and heat it up. And you're gonna maybe be able to see it, it turns shiny. Again, because we're using white on white, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see at first. All right, so hold it about a couple inches away. I like to move my heat tool around so that I don't scorch my paper. And once, I mean, you can really tell a difference in the powder. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it turns a bright white and it's shiny. So it's easy to tell where you haven't heated it long enough. All right, let's do this one. It does take your, uh, heat tool about 10 or 15 seconds to heat up enough to the high temperature to so that it will activate the embossing powder all right the other thing that we're going to do and i'm going to do this first actually because it needs to dry um this is a postage rectangle i've used a postage rectangle die and i've used um watercolor paper i'm going to take soft sea foam and i'm squeezing my ink pad so that the ink is on the inside and I'm gonna take my water painter and get it really kind of just watered down. And I'm just gonna kind of add in some washes here of color. I want it to be very light, all right? Just like that, kind of just a green wash. All right, so we'll set that back there. That's all we need that one for. Now for this, again, you're like, I can't see anything, Erica. You need, good lighting okay luckily i've got this, these ring lights they're helping me um let's get some ink on the inside here like this and i've got your water painters when you get them there's three of them one that's really fine want this one that's kind of in the middle and then the one that we just used the flat brush so i'm going to use the one in the middle i'm going to get a lot of water and i'm going to water this down i don't want it to be too intense yet 
All right, also, I should have a paper towel here. Yep, you want a paper towel, you can kind of get some of that extra water off. Now, get your close to it. Also, look at your image. You know, if you haven't made a card with it, look at the stamp case so you can kind of see where you need to go. All right, and if your lighting is really good, you'll really be able to see. And so we're just gonna take this Melon Mambo and we're gonna wash it around. See how that image is popping up? And when you stamp on it a little bit, it might remove some of that color. All right, now I'm gonna move over here and just kind of brush around. I'm not being, you know, real uh, particular, trying to stay in the lines. I'm going around the image, kind of creating a halo around it. Okay, now there's one down here. And, you know, yes, it's white on white, but Where's my water? But it's shiny, so it really does stand out. All right, let's see. This is, and when you get down here, look at your image. Look at the image on the stamp case, and it'll help you tell where you need to go. All right, so I've got that all colored in. I'm going to take a little bit of that more intense color and just kind of dab it on there like that so it'll be a little more intense in some places okay now i'm going to clean my brush really good let's move that out of the way i'm going to bring over garden green let's get some more ink there let me clean my brush really well bring over some water and now I'm just going to start at the bottom and move my way up and see how it just starts to pop out and get really close in there. If you want to give your Melon Mambo some time to dry, that will prevent any bleeding that you might have between the colors. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go for it. All right, see how I'm just bringing that down in not really trying to stay in the lines or anything. I'm just creating some differentiation between the, the areas. And then I'm gonna take that dark and just kind of set it down there in that embossed area. It will kind of hold on to that ink and it'll be a little bit darker there. Down here like that. Okay, and that is it. And now you're just gonna to wanna to let it dry. Oh, you know what, I forget. I keep forgetting this leaf right here. There's a little bit of a leaf there. Okay, now set it aside to dry. Give it, you know, five or 10 minutes. And then when it dries, it'll look like this. You'll be ready to cut it out. And let's put our card together. All right, so we're gonna bring over, let me move my water, because that would be a disaster. Clean up my mess. Let's bring over our cut and boss machine. And we'll get our die. We're gonna use this one right here. And we're gonna lay that on. And now your paper is gonna be warped because you heated it. So I recommend post-it tape. I probably recommend that on every video I make when you're using a die cut. It's gonna help you get your flat or your die in the right place and you don't have to worry about it jumping around. Now we'll add this, let's see if I can do this. This is one of our tailor-made tags. And now carefully we'll put that on top of there and roll it through. Oh, everything's falling. Here is our flower and that post-it tape will just peel right off. There we go. Look, I forgot to color that, that leaf on that one. That's all right. We can add a little bit of color to it. Let me find where my tag fell right here. There we go. All right, let's bring back over. Let's see. I think I still have some green on there. Nope. Let's open that up and I can see where I've just left off some color over here too. 
You can go back to when it's dry and add in some more color if you want. I like to add layers of watercolor um, when it, but you really have to give it time to dry, which a lot of times I'm not patient enough for that. But it does um, multiple layers, adds lots of dimension to your projects. Okay, let's bring back over our watercolor wash. There's something else I want to do to this. Let me get a piece of grid paper. Um, you guys know I love to flick ink. <laughs> so here's my uh, dark soft sea foam stamp and blend. And we'll just flick on some ink to that using the brush end. And then let's grab our dimensionals and put this together. Okay, that's gonna just go right there in the middle. And then I'm gonna, I don't ever tie my twine through my tags, you guys. I just fake it, okay? So stick that on with your dimensional. You'll never know that it's faked. And it, you know, you don't have to do all that tedious trying to loop it through. I'm gonna tie my bow. Actually, it looks like I did a double bow. So let's fold our uh, linen thread in half. And then we'll, you use the two pieces like they're one so that you then have kind of a, a more fluffy bow. All right, we need a mini glue dot, which I'm gonna get right here. And put that right there. So see how it looks like it's tied through there, but it's not. Okay, now we've got a Melon Mambo card base. And I've cut a piece of our designer series paper. This is my favorite pattern. You've got that on the back as well. And there's a purple one too that I really, really like. Okay, and then we'll get some dimensionals. Let's do one, two, three. And we're gonna put that kind of over on the left side. Now on the end side, I'm going to put a piece of basic white. And then we have just these little dots that I thought were kind of fun just to put in the corners. And there you have it. Easier than coloring with Stampin' Blends. Oh, I forgot my sequins, didn't I? Easier than coloring with Stampin' Blends, although you, uh, coloring with Stampin' Blends is my favorite. But, of course, you can do this, which is a lot less tedious. Okay, so I'm adding some of these sequins right now. They are um, out of stock. They'll be back next month. Um, and we've got other sequins if you need sequins right away. Just type in sequins in the search bar on our website and you'll find tons of sequins that you could use. All right, click the link here on YouTube. Go back to my blog. Let me know if you have questions and happy stamping. Bye.